Ah, my leg. Oh, the pain. Oh, just shut up, man. I'm on oh, his team my... and I still don't care. Oh, my other leg. Oh. People with fresh looking haircuts can now be detained and questioned for 24 hours. Well, I guess your boy is getting away scot free. Yo, guys, it is your boy, quantifiably cataclysmic trim near and near. And welcome to FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But it's not just been a big week in the UK, it's been a big week for American football. So we're crossing over there now. Oh, God. God. Super Bowl 55 took place last weekend. Interestingly, if they have five more, it gets upgraded to a Mega Bowl. <laughs> There was a lot of throwing, a couple catches here and there as well, but mostly there was just ridiculous innuendos. This commentator just said this guy's length makes him difficult to deal with. Is this guy William Saliba or something? Anyway, back across the pond now. Oh my, not this again. Am I going to have to make this gag for a third week in a row? They're absolutely marvellous. I can't deal with this club any longer. Do they actually realise what they've put me through in the last few weeks? They've seen my depression and and decided they're going to continue doing it anyway. To the detriment of my well-being and mental health, Liverpool were doppied 4-1 by Manchester City this weekend. The title favourites running out 4-1 victors thanks to two goalkeeping howlers from Alisson. I love Ali, man. He's still one of the best goalkeepers in the world if you have any football knowledge whatsoever. But for fuck's sake, man, now really is not the time. In that David Silva role more central. Oh. He's turned into the Amazon Aretha Balaga, the Samba Stuart Taylor, the Caperinius Carrier. How do you do it twice within a matter of minutes? Do you not learn from the first mistake trying to play out from the back and then just lump it forward the second time? Now hear me out, yeah. I know the first time out, it didn't really go to plan. However, oh, I swear to the heavens, if you do this again, Jurgen Klopp supposedly came out and put this down to Alisson having literally cold feet. Just put thicker socks on then. This is an important football match. You can't just start claiming you needed a hot water bottle on them halfway through. I can only imagine how badly the Liverpool training Zoom call went the next day. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. She just kicked him out. <laughs> We've lost to a defence whose members drag each other about by solely their heads. Ilkay Gundogan scored a field goal instead of converting his penalty. That was later in the evening, lads. If I'm going to talk about the game properly, though, analysis and that, uh, it's a shame because we were actually genuinely pretty good in the first half in comparison to games we played recently. But ultimately, we gave Man City an excuse to pull away in the second half. They actually improved a lot when they changed system at half time. Foden was unreal. Some Someone clearly let him clot an Icelandic girl in midweek. And you thought I wouldn't mention the Liverpool penalty. Listen, I think without bias, it's a pen. You can't pull someone's arm in this day and age. It's modern football. The guy's going to go down and utilise his GCSE in drama school. The only positive thing about this entire game, though, was Mika Richards showing Roy Keane a video of himself celebrating on FIFA 21. At least, we've had the negatives in this video. It physically can't get any worse than that. Oh, fucking hell. At risk of getting FTW blocked for a second week in a row, I'll explain the situation rather than showing it. A video emerged of young Arsenal centre-back William Saliba filming one of his friends on under-18 French international duty from a few years ago. He was chilling. He was filming himself, though, next to a teammate of his who was naked and, um, shoulder-shaking, if you will. He's holding wood, some may say. Bro, I don't even know what's occurring. I don't understand. How is he even going to explain and get out of this one? If you is with this, with, if you will be with this, no, I'm not. There's being a ball playing centre back, and then there's this. This is just unnecessary. As you can imagine, it went viral. It started trending on Twitter. What would his mate have even said after waking up in the morning? You seen my balls, batty and dick? This month, more than my BM. If he's filming this going on to his right hand side, imagine if he ends up ever facing Eden Hazard in a football match. Ah, right, yeah, so basically, so I've, I'm in front of her, right? And I'm pamming, yes. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me more, tell me more. I 
name? Willy bro. I can't, that's not the best name to call him right now. What? What's going on? Why have you, you've got the flash on, you know? Yeah, man, because you're flashing. Saliba actually came out a couple days ago saying he was frustrated at the fact that Mikel Arteta had basically judged him off like two and a half games at the club. It wouldn't surprise me if Arteta's taken that personally and leaked the video himself. Could I just say, why is everyone so calm in this video? There's only fans content going on to your left hand side and you're all just chill about it. Oh yeah, no, mate, don't worry about it. It's the fourth time this has happened this week. It's only Tuesday. Look, legit, all right, I've made jokes about this situation, but I have, I actually don't have any judgment whatsoever. Whether it's to do with what people get up to in their own private time, whether it's to do with whatever he specifically gets up to, I actually don't care. What I do care about is seeing it on my timeline for no apparent reason. For the love of God, please don't share everything you do on Snapchat, all right? The snap streaks don't need to see this content. Keeping on with whatever theme this is right now, this series is just firmly in the bin. A thread on Twitter got a whole lot of attention about Divock Origi's arse. Now, it started with Jurgen Klopp grabbing it. The next picture was him shaking hands with Neil Warnock, who then shook hands with Sean Dyche, who then shook hands with David Moyes, and so on and so forth, all the way down. The Rock's involved. He met Barack Obama, he met the Queen, who then shook hands with Boris Johnson. So all in all, Boris Johnson has touched Divock Origi's arse. An under-23s match between Newcastle and Sunderland was postponed this week. One fan responded by saying that Newcastle were gonna get beaten anyway, to which Newcastle winger Alan Son Maximin wasn't exactly having anything to do with it. He posted this, it's a sh housery award. Meanwhile, we've got Reese Lucas here reminiscing on an old Rotherham United tweet from 2013, in which, as a youngster, he was dribbled past by a then very young Ben Chilwell, who then went on to score after skinning him. It seems as though their careers have gone in very different directions. Manchester United versus Everton provided yet more Premier League entertainment this week, ending in a 3-3 draw thanks to a late Dominic Calvert-Lewin equaliser. And for that final goal, Harry Maguire kept five Everton players on side, including the opposition goalkeeper. How do you even... You see, I used to play for Leicester and they played in blue, so I kind of got confused for a second. It's yet more drop points though for Manchester United and really at this point, City look to a bore. I mean, one, the league, you get it, because 500 million pounds on the defense and that, so. Elsewhere, in a second questionable red card in a row from Mike Dean saw him criticized online. He sent off West Ham midfielder Thomas Suchek for what seemed to be accidental arm contact with a Fulham attacker. Fucking hell, that's unacceptable. What's going on? I've just... I, you've tried taking his head off. He could have been killed. Can you imagine? You're in a flipping nightclub and you accidentally graze alongside someone. Mike Dean just flips out of nowhere. Gives you a three-weekend suspension. I think it's fair to say Specsavers knew where they stood on the situation. It really is poor from him, and I feel like if it was any other referee, we'd be seeing actual action taken here. If anything, to get him out of the spotlight, because he's getting some horrendous threats as well, which which, by the way, are just ridiculous. It's a game, ladies and gentlemen. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> and that concludes the beautiful game. Around the world though now and one Turkish midfielder scored a hat-trick of free kick goals against Akizar Sport to make it 3-0. Bend it like Tashkin Chalish. Doesn't it doesn't have the same ring to it. I'm not gonna lie. Over in the Netherlands and lead leaders Ajax accidentally left their latest signing Sebastian Haller out of their Europa League squad. They just forgot to include him. I mean you, surely you'd think might as well just lock the poor geezer out of the training ground. It's not really been a great week for Ajax either because their Cameroonian goalkeeper Andre Anana has been banned from football for an entire year for failing a drugs test or doping test a few months ago. Apparently he took a tablet that had been prescribed to his wife or girlfriend and because he felt ill. Why do people do this? Not everything you see is a paracetamol lad. It's not Nurofen. This has been prescribed to the woman. He probably saw the news that he'd been banned and was like, oh no, no. Because like it's not a good thing. He was probably not. Over in the German third division now, 
and Ingolstadt were 1-0 down going into the last minute of the game against Victoria Köln. Up steps their goalkeeper in the 93rd minute. The ball falls to him and he volleys it into the back of the net to equalise. But with still a minute on the clock, Victoria Köln give the ball away again and Ingolstadt score a second one minute later to go from 1-0 down in the 93rd minute to 2-1 up in the 95th. Closer to home and even in youth games involving his sides, Neil Warnock will still give it his all to the referee. Consistent referee! Don't give them all day, man! Meanwhile, in Leeds' game versus Crystal Palace, Rafinha Ooh. effectively retired Gary Cahill with this spin. I'm sorry if I'm the defender in this situation. I don't break a stride. I keep running through the fire exit, out into the car park. I'm getting on the number 53 bus. I'm traveling 17 stops out of the entire county. And I'm setting up with a new family in Devon because I can't be allowing that to happen to myself. Moving on now, and we've got some outstanding ability going on north of the border up in Scotland. After beating Borussia Mönchengladbach over in the Bundesliga, German side FC Köln decided to replicate Borussia Mönchengladbach forward Marcus Thuram's celebration by lifting his corner flag up into the air. It's a mild one, but I'll still give them a shithousery award for it. Staying on the German vibe, and we had perhaps the most interesting corner routine in modern footballing history. Back in Turkey now, in a game between Kayseri Spor and Erzurum Spor, a player by the name of Yav Akka was sent off. Um, now, it wasn't for an original challenge that you can see in the background. He kicked out and got a yellow card, then proceeded to just try and scrap with everybody until he was sent off by the referee. Turns out he was loaned out by the club that he was playing against in the form of Kaizera Spore, as they suffer in a battle against relegation. I wonder if they loaned him out and tried to get him sent off on purpose to win the game. Get your tinfoil hats out. Meanwhile, there's a much more simple version of football going on over in Australia. Weezy can bend it. Bruce Cabell! to make the impact, it's in surely, Federici, he kept it out did he, he did not did he, it's back off the bar, can you believe what you just saw? But now it is time for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, and Romanian defensive midfielder Mihai Catalin Bordenu was bought by a Saudi Arabian side by the name of Al Kadzia from CFR Cluj. Now, the problem with this is, they thought he was a striker. Yep, I don't know what would, nobody had been scouting on Football Manager clearly. They bought him thinking he was a striker when in actuality he was a defensive midfielder. So now they've just decided to loan him back to his original club because they didn't need him. Who signed this deal off? Ed Woodward. Over in Spain and Real Madrid seem to be suffering from somewhat of an injury crisis at the moment. Multiple big names out, including Sergio Ramos. If we look at their training routines in the gym, we may be able to see part of the reason as to why they're suffering so much. Scottish side Livingston confirmed their most recent game was going to have to be abandoned due to a severe amount of snowfall. Ah, listen, you'll be fine, lads. Just whip out the orange ball and you'll be calm. Meanwhile, there's crazy news coming out of Barcelona. Brazilian midfielder Felipe Coutinho will cost the Catalan Giants an extra 5 million euros if he plays seven more games for the club this season due to a clause that Liverpool put into his contract. They've decided they're going to actively try and avoid playing him this year because they can't afford to pay the extra 5 mil. I, Lionel, listen, if you're watching, yeah, just, uh, we know you're getting held against your will. It's okay, you can just leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> but now it's time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. We saw some intelligence last week, a bit of skill, if you like. This week, there was intelligence, it's just the ability that kind of ran out at the end of it. On to the weird stuff though now. A Brazilian winger by the name of Emerson Carioca was red carded and given an eight game ban for stripping down and waving his genitals about the gaff at the opposition while celebrating for a goal. No, William, calm down. You don't need to film it. Over in Serbia now and in a friendly between Kolubara and Radnički Pragujevac maybe, uh, a dog managed to get on to the pitch. Uh, it actually invaded 
the game four times. It got so bad that the referee decided to give it a red card. And when the dog refused to leave the pitch, the match had to be abandoned. Just put it on a lead, man. Over in Russia and one non-league stadium was literally bombed during the course of the week. Thankfully, no one was hurt. It just did a lot of damage to the pitch and I assume will cost a lot of money to restore. Honestly, I've seen worse penalty spots in Sunday League here. I reckon that's still playable. In a game between Fortaleza and Coritiba, a penalty was taken and saved by the Coritiba goalkeeper. However, he was adjudged to have leapt off his line, was yellow carded and hence red carded. An outfielder had to go in goal by the name of Sara Fiore and he actually saved the retake. Unbelievable scenes there. And ending now on some pretty important topics that need to be talked about. First of all, we've got an investigation going on from the FA over a game between Morecambe and Tranmere, where Morecambe's Jan Songo was sent off red carded for apparently using a homophobic slur. Now, I personally think it's actually, if that's the case, I think it's great actually that the referee has just, like taken that upon himself and sent him off. That doesn't have a place in the game. What kind of message does it send to any young aspiring footballers who happen to be gay or bisexual? And it also threatens to continue the stigma of a lack of gay representation in football, generally speaking. There's not a single openly gay footballer in the UK and stuff like this won't help. So it's good that it's punished. And there's equal disappointment when it comes to the progression of English football. In the case of Axel Tuanzebi, once again receiving a lot of racist comments, a lot of racially charged messages on social media after his game against Everton. John Terry sent his words of support. I don't think it'll mean too much to him with your record, John. But something's got to be done about this. It's getting out of hand. Every single time a black footballer makes a mistake, this is what's happening. There has to be genuine charges. If there's not going to be identification on social media, there has to be some sort of charge. You know, the police or whoever have to actually take this seriously if it's ever going to progress. With that, that is going to be it for football this week. And I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video, of course, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.